that's uh, completed when one does kirtanadi va krishnasya, when one glorifies Krishna. Uh, mukta sangha param brajet, that just by doing that, you get uh, delivered from the material world, all the miseries of the material world. Of course, in our line, we're not chanting to get delivered. This is a, a very secondary kind of a concomitant that comes naturally from chanting. The devotees are interested in the relationship with Krishna. And the name Krishna is the same as the person Krishna. This is confirmed in the Shastra. Nama chintamani Krishnas Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purna Shuto Nityamukto Bina Dvam Nama Namino. An astounding statement. An astounding statement. You can live off this one statement for the rest of your life and, and concentrate your practice of chanting Hare Krishna by doing that. Um, that is Nama Chintamani Krishna, so that we're talking about the name of Krishna, the name, what we say, name of God. Krishna is more than God. But <clears throat> Nama Chintamani Krishna, so this Chintamani means something very specific. There's what's called a philosopher's stone, a stone that. Uh, if you touch it to anything else, it transforms it. It turns it into a kind of a of a gold a, of gold. And so the name it's being compared to that. That if you touch the name of, of Krishna, then you'll be transformed. Your heart will be transformed. Your life will be transformed. Everyone who touches it will be transformed. Nama chintamani Krishna's. And then the next line says, Chaitanya rasa vigraha. So Chaitanya means it's alive. It's not, it's not a dead thing. It's actually a conscious living being. It's actually the supreme conscious living being. Nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam. There's the word again. Eko bahunam yogi kama. This verse comes from the Shastra that says that uh, it gives us perspective of who we are and why we should chant Krishna's names. Because we're eternal and we're conscious we can't deny that can we because even if you deny it that's an act of consciousness so nityo nityanam that means there's one supreme eternal and then there there is a plurality of eternal living beings kesha grasha bhagasha sharam shasha trishatmakaha jiva sukshma swarupo yam sankyatito chitkana what is, the, the, what is that plur plurality of eternals? They're called chitkana. They're conscious particles. And the, even their size is described. Kesha, gra, kesha means a hair. So if you take a hair and you divide it uh, 100 times by 100 times, you'll have the size, uh, width and breadth of the soul. Tiny, tiny, microscopic. Little particle of consciousness. So there's one supreme eternal who is the origin of all those other uh, plurality, the plurality of eternals. And all those little eternal living conscious beings are dependent on the supreme conscious being. Nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam eko bahunam yogidita kama. And the verse says that one supreme eternal for lack of a better word, to say God, is uh, fulfilling the desires of all living entities. That's what it means to be alive. You have desires, you're conscious, and therefore you have feelings. We're sentient, we have feelings. That means desire. And in Gita, Krishna says, Nahi kashit shanam api jatu tishchatya karma karyate yavasha karma sarva prakriti jayargunai. We're always uh, active. And even when you go to sleep, you're active in your dreams in a subtle way, and when you wake up, you're active. Constantly, um, we're animated one way or the other. Sometimes we're suspended in susupti, but that's a, another, uh, <clears throat> that's just a suspension of consciousness for some time. But to get some idea who we are, we're, we're a part, a tiny little part and parcel of the supreme consciousness, and we're eternally conscious ourselves. 
Krishna confirms in the Bhagavad Gita that our nature is, is never extinguished, we're eternal. We've always existed, we always will exist. We can't be killed, we can't be cut, we can't be burned, we can't be dried. And a, an intelligent person then who comes to knowledge, what is knowledge? It's, a, it's understanding what is my nature, what is my real nature, that I'm eternal, conscious, sentient, feeling, living being, I'm eternal. And that the body that I'm residing in is a field of activity, it's a car, it's a vehicle that I'm temporarily associated with. And that gets kind of complicated, why I'm associated with it and, and how to become extricated from the body. Although it may sound philosophically easy, it's a little bit of a process. But anyway, there's a little context of who we are. Nityo nityanam chetanas chetananam eko bahunam yoviditati kaman. So, very interesting about uh, this verse that our desires are being fulfilled by the, the, the one supreme consciousness, the one supreme conscious being, and that's Krishna. And he's not, it's not different from his name. So you need look no further. He's the, the supplier of everything, as he says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasya chaham hridisan nivishto mantaksmitir kyanam apohanam cha that I'm supplying um, f uh, memory, knowledge, forgetfulness. It, that's all coming from Krishna. We're, we're fully dependent on his um, fulfilling our desires. So when we say Chaitanya, that means that uh, the name is that supreme, fully conscious, living being who's fulfilling all our desires. So Nama, the name of Krishna. Nama Chintamani, the, the name of, of Krishna. It's like a Chintamani, everything it touches, it transforms into something wonderful. Chaitanya. Uh, <clears throat> Nama Chintamani Krishna's Chaitanya Rasa. So rasa means juice. It means also relationship. It's the, it's the um, what actually sustains us, a taste. And that comes from uh, Krishna. There's a relationship that we have with the name of Krishna, a very deep relationship. Everyone lives for rasa. As Prabhupada points out in the Nectar of Devotion, that uh, a man or a woman goes out and works hard to make money to come back so they can have... Um, place to live and, and a relationship with, with others, with a family, maybe, or with friends and so forth. That's what we live for, is these relationships with others. Do you agree? Should I prove it? I mean, you already agreed, but maybe we should extend it into a, a scenario that, that uh, proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Let's say you had an opportunity to live in a big palace. Somebody's gonna give you a palace rent-free to live in. Good? Yeah. So far? Somebody else, uh, okay. A, a full palace, and in it you can have whatever you want that'll make you, uh, that'll keep you occupied. What would you like? I mean, I know you all, you all don't want anything, but just play along with me. Friends. <laughs> no friends. Here's the only thing, I'm just gonna put one restriction, you can't have any friends. No pets, no plants, no kids. No other living beings. Just things. Laptop. You can have a laptop, but no, oh. inter no internet. There's no Facebook. Oh. <laughs> okay, you have a laptop, but you can't get on the internet. What else? Because that way you, could, you, there's no, you can't interact with any other living beings. What else can you have? A pool table. A pool table you can have. Yeah. What else? Pool. Swimming pool you can have. What else? Okay. TV. TV. All right. A kaleidoscope. Ranted. Okay. Huh? A kaleidoscope. You can have a kaleidoscope. <laughs> you want cars? Lots of cars. Uh, I don't know. What else do people put in a palace? Furniture. Furniture. Lots of furniture. The best <laughs> combined. Better than IKEA. <laughs> okay, so you've got all the best furniture, cars, everything. Just no living entities. None. And no contact. Okay? 
Not okay, Vaisheshi Kadas. Not okay. And you stay in that in that beautiful palace, all these things, and then a week later you you'll be restless. A day later you'll be restless. But let's say a week later you're starting to go crazy. And then a little green bird flies into your palace. He'll become your best friend, the object of your attention. Because he's Chaitana, he's conscious. That's what we want. We, we hanker for this rasa, some relationship. That's why we keep an animal. Because you can look at him, he looks back at you and goes, hey, I like you. you know, I like you too. And that's rasa. You know, everyone wants that little relationship with the little other conscious living being. We, we crave that. That's the rasa. But this verse, astoundingly saying, that's in the name. Krishna is name. You can get that rasa from the name. You can actually feel the really you can experience the the relationship and it's a kind of relationship that is completely fulfilling so chaitanya conscious chaitanya rasa vigraha and so vigraha means there's form the name and uh, when you say krishna krishna's form is there in fact if you if you can't speak if you're deaf and dumb and you want to say krishna how would you do it Like this. this is the, the sign for Krishna. Everyone do this, please. There you go. So I went on Sankirtan when I was in England a year, year or two ago with a, a devotee who's deaf and dumb. And he was distributing books like anything. He said, I want to go on book distribution. I mean, he didn't say it like that. He said it to his person who, who uh, interprets the sign language, the signs for him. And so he was... He wrote a book uh, about how to sign in Krishna consciousness because there's not a large vocabulary for deaf and dumb people in, 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 in sign language. So he wrote one, a remarkable devotee. Anyway, he sold m many more books than anybody else on the street because he, so, he, he was so eager for it. But he taught us a few of the, of the signs, but this one for Krishna. So, Vigraha, the form of Krishna is there within the name. And Narada Muni confirms in the uh, fifth chapter, the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, he says, Murtim Amurtikam, that this um, process of understanding God is best done through the uh, mantra. Fascinating, isn't it? The best way, the quickest way to come in contact with God and understand God and Krishna is through the mantra. So he says, mantra murtim amurtikam. So murti means, it means form also. And murti also means difficulty. So mantra murtim amurtikam means that when you chant the mantra, then without difficulty, you can have the form. Mantra murtim amurtikam. And then he says, you can have the full darshan of God through the mantra. No obstacle there. So this is this verse is saying, and, and these verses are so nice because they are um, they're like a zip file. Everything's in there. It, it, it's, it's truncated. So it has, it's full of meaning. If you explore it before you're chanting and you get these meanings in your mind while you're chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, then your mind will become fascinated. This is yoga. Yoga deals with controlling the mind first. You have to make the mind your friend. So the, the power of this mantra, the Hare Krishna mantra and chanting Hare Krishna, both in Japa and in Kirtan, is that the name is attractive. It can actually attract the mind. Now, it's like a, it's like a it can be like a fish hook. The mind is like a fish. It's always swimming around, you know, if you go up to a fish, it just takes off. It's hard to catch on to the fish. Mind can be like that, isn't it? Or is it just me? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's very tricky. You know, mind's in and up, boom, it's gone. The fish is, is uh, elusive. The mind is elusive too. You think like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the mantra, and then it's like, I'm thinking about Kukamanga. How did I start thinking about Kukamanga? I didn't even know where Kukamanga is. But the mind's over there going, I'm in Kukamanga. You know? you know, back here, we're doing the mantra now. You know? <laughs> so you have to, you have to be like a, a fisherman. You know, the, the fishermen, they're always absorbed in how to catch the fish. They invent these 
really uh, elaborate um, lures. They have lures, they look just like a fish, and engineers spend millions of dollars to, to make the next new lure. It has all these hooks on it, but when it goes to the water, it imitates the movement of the fish. And, it'll, and then the fish see it in the water, and they go, that's a fish. And they bite it, and then they're caught. So what we want to do in our meditation is catch the mind on the, the hook of the mantra. Mantra has a hook. The mind can become hooked on things. People in the, in the music industry know this. They become expert at hearing different songs and they say, now that's got a hook in it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I want to hold your hand. You know, that's still stuck in my mind from the 1964, <laughs> the Beatles. <laughs> and I remember singing it on the way home. You know, it was a big hit on the radio. And it just gets in your mind. Um, and so the mind can become hooked. So it can be just as well hooked on this, on this name, on the mantra. So meditation, you have to keep bringing that lure by. You sit down, you chant the mantra, and keep running it by the mind. Remember, the mind's an elusive fish, and you have to become expert at bringing that lure by. Okay, bring it by, bring it by, bring it by, and then catch. Catch the mind. Once it, the mind catches on that hook of the holy name, then the holy name starts bringing the, the, the mind back to Krishna. And Krishna says, Manmana Pavamad Bhakta, always think of me. And so this is the power of the mantra. It's better than staring at a wall. Because you can do that also. There's some meditation processes where you, you just, let's sit here for 10 days and do nothing. You know, there's some, there may be something in that because normally there's so much disturbance in the atmosphere that uh, we become, I become uh, identified with all this movement. And I start moving and I start thinking I'm crazy. Because the mind is, is moving, it's agitated by the mode of passion. It keeps moving, moving, moving. And if I identify with it, then I feel like I'm moving. It's like when you have water and the moon's reflected there. If the water's moving, then you think, oh, the moon's moving. And so this is my uh, illusory state in this world. I'm identifying with the mind that's being agitated by these modes of nature, these modalities. Like passion is always agitating the mind agitating the waters of the mind and then it, it appears to be moving 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 and if I identify with it then I, I I always feel like I have to move I have to go I have to move I have to go I have to move and I can't really think of anything except movement so sometimes people sit for long periods of time just so they can sort of still the mind but Shastra says these kinds of meditation are not ultimately effective because the mind isn't hooked yet the demigods who came to pray to Lord Krishna, who was in the uh, womb of Devaki, said that any kind of meditation that doesn't include attraction and relationship with the person, the personal form of God, which is so beautiful because he has beautiful eyes and features that capture the mind. That kind of liberation, it won't stay. Your mind will, will get back loose again at some point. Vishamrita Muni, 10,000 years invested in his meditation practice. And when Menaka came, he didn't even see her. He just heard the ankle bell, so I'm out of here. I'm going. You know, the, the mind's like that. It's like sit 10,000 years and okay, gone, you know, <laughs> gone again. So it really, really has to be hooked. There has to be something positive, a positive attainment of the mind. It has to be taken somewhere that's enchanting, that's just as entangling as the material world. We want to be entangled. That's our nature. We want to be entangled in rasa. We want to be entangled in relationships. That's why people love watching soap operas. You know what soap operas are? You do? No. Okay, say no. That's the right answer. So, they don't know anything about it. So soap operas, what they do is they, they create these situations, entangling situations with, with people, just ordinary people. And over and over again, it's like, what happened? Uh, you know, I lost my job, and then he ran off with her. And it, you know, it's just entang unlimitedly entangling, and everyone watches it all day long. They can't stop watching the soap opera. In any kind of film, it's all about some kind of entanglement. 
If you just have a film that's just, you go and pay your, how much is it, $100 to see a movie these days? You go and pay your $100 and you sit down and then the, the, the credits come on and then it's just a blank screen. <laughs> White noise, everyone sit there. And then, oh, we want our money back. <laughs> you want something entangling. The mind has to be entangled. And so the spiritual world's entangling. The, 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 in, in Goloka, in Vraja, this is the point. Vraja means to move, to walk. Those who are walking for Krishna, they're Vrajabhasis. Srila Bhakti Sananta Saraswati said this. It means if you're walking everywhere for Krishna, you're a Vrajabhasi. Vrajabhasi doesn't necessarily mean you just live in Vrindavan. You can live in Vrindavan and be walking around and make a profit off the Dham, and that's an offense, and you're not really in Vrindavan. Or you can live in Scarborough, and if you're walking here, there, and everywhere because you're trying to broadcast Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement, and you're, you're moving around here, there, and everywhere, you're a Vrajabhasi. And it's entangling, right? Let's ask Ananda Garanga. He's the temple president. How do you feel about that? <laughs> it's hard, right? I mean, there's a lot of things to deal with. There's entanglements. You're on the phone, you're driving your car, you're picking up stuff, you know, and then, and, you know, such and such calls in the middle of the night and says, uh, um, you know, they didn't deliver it. And, you know, there's unlimited things. It's very entangling. So the mind has to be entangled in something, and the holy name can actually catch the mind and entangle us in the, the rasa that we're looking for. So Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha, and the form is there. We need form to satisfy us. Um, Purna Shudho Nityamukto. So Purna means it's complete, and perfect, completely perfect. So that Krishna is described in the in the uh, Upanishads. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnam Udachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vishishyate. It's a perfect, perfect, everything perfect. He, whatever he does, he's completely full and perfect. This is uh, the nature of the Absolute Truth, the Personality of God. It's perfect and complete. And you see his creation too. If you look around at it, it's, it's astounding. Just look at nature. And Krishna says, look at my nature and see how, how incredible it is. You know, look at a seed. He says, Bijamam Sarvabhutaram. The seed, I'm the seed of all existence. If you look at a seed, it's a, it's a little miracle in and of itself. It's got a little plant inside. And there's enough food to sustain it while it's putting its root down into the soil. How does it do that? Let's pay, um, what is the big university here? Toronto, Toronto UT. Let's give the, uh, the botany department and we'll bring in all the engineers. And we'll put everyone on and we'll give them a trillion dollars, the whole university, a trillion dollar grant to create one seed, create one mustard seed. Frustrated, they can't do it. But Krishna does it all the time, makes billions of them. And that's how complete he is. And each mustard seed has in it the ability, the, the, the natural um, potency to grow into a plant and then grow millions and more mustard seeds over and over again. That's poor enough. So what to speak, that's Krishna's external energy. And he tells Arjuna, that's just, this whole external energy is just created by a tiny little spark of my splendor. Insignificant. What to speak of the internal energy? That's interesting. So Purna, the name is complete, and all that's in the name. You can actually experience that completeness, that connection to that complete uh, person who's emanating all these complete units everywhere. You can actually have communion, direct communion through the name. That's what the verses say. Purna Shudho, and it's completely pure. It's not mixed with anything else that uh, it's like uh, sand in, in your sweet rice. And you get some, the material world's all mixed happiness. It looks like it should be nice, but there's just a twinge of something that ruins it. Some fear that I'm gonna lose it, there's a beginning and an end, or it just uh, is contaminated, but no contamination in the holy name. It's the pure thing. Everyone wants something pure. Purna Shudho Nitya Mukto, so it's eternally liberated. Never does the name uh, become a part of the conditional material world. Eternally liberated. 
Mukto, Bina Dvam Nama Namino. And then it says emphatically that and the person are absolutely the same. No difference at all. Of course, then you get these Vaishnavas that come along, like Rupa Goswami, and say, but there is a difference. He said, Vacham Vacha Kamitu Deiti Bhavato Nama Swarupa Dvayam. He said, Dvayam, there is a difference between Krishna and his name. He said, although they're the same, we're detecting a difference. And the difference is that the name is more merciful than Krishna the person. Why? Because it comes to you. It comes to you. You know, we go out in the street today, today Dharma Prana, the, the, the uh, inimitable Dharma Prana and uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami who go out every day at 2 o'clock to, to chant the holy names, distributing the holy names to people. Um, go up and down the street and they vibrate that holy name and, and it goes in the ears of people and it bounces in the courtyard of their heart. And, uh, and it, that's the name's aggressive agenda. It comes to the material world to chase after people. Even though the souls say, nope, not interested in God. No time. Have a look at this. No, nah, I'm all set. I'm okay. But the holy name, um, realizing that everyone's not okay, comes to the material world and follows people wherever they go. And through the devotees, the devotees distribute the holy name and then it, it gets into them, it gets on their clothes, gets in their ears, they take the holy name, it gets everywhere, it starts <laughs> spreading all over the place, and then all these powerful effects of the holy name start manifesting in people's lives. That's why we also distribute books. It's written kirtan, the name's in the book. And that same vibration, then it becomes transportable. See, we're making a big revolution all over the world, that's what we're doing. This Srimad Bhagavatam says Narada is meant to create a revolution in the impious lives of the world's misdirected civilization. It's out of compassion that Shukadeva Goswami came and spoke it. And it's all the same vibration. So that vibration and, and, uh, is carried by the devotees, they distribute it, and the name goes and it, it changes the lives of people, even though they didn't ask for it. So therefore, Rupa Goswami says, it is uh, more merciful than even Krishna himself, even though it is Krishna. So we have all this. We have all this. This is the main thing that we have. This is our, our treasure, our great prize, this holy name. It's been given to us. And if, if we approach the holy name with reverence, we have some knowledge, we hear about it, we get some again, we realize that there's more... Uh, to this world that meets the eye, we're not really part of this world, and that we hear about the science of the holy name, like in this, as we have in this verse, then we'll, the mind will become a little interested that maybe there's something in it for me. Then if we begin practicing, Rupa Goswami says, in the beginning you take it like medicine, because the mind, even though maybe you might pick the interest a little bit, the mind will, will still be in its loop, it's routine that it's been in for so many millions of years through many lifetimes. And it will still fly away and be interested in other inferior kinds of subject matters. But if you continue to practice, he says, it's like medicine. It, the, the effect of the name will, will cure your disease, which is avidya. Avidya and, and no interest in, in spiritual life. And as you get cured, you begin to have more and more interest in spiritual life. It becomes your main interest in life. So we take this uh, from the, the Shastra, that, that the name is, is everything. Bhakti Thakura says, nothing to be had in, this, in the 14 worlds except the name. Good to know. Saves a lot of time, doesn't it? <laughs> because I'm always looking somewhere to find something. And why am I wandering all over the material world? I'm looking, looking here and there. You know, where is there something that I can actually embrace, that I can actually call mine, that I can actually, uh, you know, have rasa, that real taste that I'm looking for? And, and the, the Vaishnavas come out and say, we found it. We've got it for you. The whole thing's right there in the name. Forget everything else. Just take this. And they do. Haridas Thakur would sit and just chant. He didn't want anything else. All possible by the holy name. 
it's such an easy philosophy to pass on to people because it's universal. Everyone can appreciate it. You know, what's in a name? If you get somebody's name, you can track them down, right? You meet somebody and then they, they, got, they got away. You get his name. Didn't get his name. You missed him. You get his name, then okay, let's look him up. Look him up on the internet. We'll find out where he lives. And the name of God's like that is so personal. And there are many names of God. Some of them are called secondary names. Some of them are called primary names. So this is also, we can relate to this. Definitely relate to this. We all have primary names and secondary names. Right? Yes or yes? Yes. yes. <laughs> Emphatically yes. We all have uh, primary and secondary names. So let's ask uh, Bhakti Sam. What is your what is your secondary name? Secondary name. What do you what do you uh, when you fill out your immigration form when you're flying into another country? What do you put? I put Hassam. Hassam. My, That's your family my, name. Yeah, that's the name I was given at birth. Okay, that was your birth name. Now, when you were growing, your name was Hassam, and do you have any nicknames when you're growing up? Not Pucci. really. <laughs> <laughs> Sweetie? I think someone called me Samster the Hamster one Samster time. the Hamster. Okay. Did your friends at school call you that? It's one guy. He had a weird and One guy in school, but okay, so that was kind of a, that relationship that you had, he called Sam, Samster the Hamster? Yeah, he could pull it off. And, and he was like, it's like a, a buddy at school, right? Yeah. You, you guys could like wrestle and... You know, you had sort of a, like that. some kind of a a, a, a sakya. It was sakya ras, right? Friendship, friendship ras. Okay, so Samster the hamster. So now, say you're walking, you go to Kukamanga, and you're walking down the street. You've never been to Kukamanga before. You didn't, you never knew what it was about before. Someone gave you a ticket. You went there, and you're walking down the street of Kukamanga, and someone leans out the window and says, "Hey, Sam, ham, Samster the hamster." What are you going to do? Turn. You're going to turn around and say, wow, my friend from school, right? Samster the hamster. And then there he is. That, that, that's Sakya Ras. That, I remember that. And, it, you know, whatever your mom called you. Anyone want to tell us? What did your mommy call you? Come on. Baby. Baby? <laughs> yes? <laughs> Kiefer. Okay, I didn't choose baby because that it's too universal. So Kiefer, he called you Kiefer, and so you know someone, you, you know, yells out, "Hey Kiefer!" You're gonna go like, "How'd you know that? How'd you know that? That's a that's a primary name. That's getting intimate. There's something in the name. We are somebody, and we're named something. And and when we when we call out to God, see these, these books like Srimad Bhagavatam are very esoteric because they're getting into the primary area. They're talking about where God lives, what kind of relationships he has. This science is not widely known. Most people know that God is great. We can experience that just if we're a little quiet. If we just have a little gratitude, we can experience God is great. The creation is perfect. There's a vibration you can feel if you just are a little quiet. You can experience God is great. But, but how great is he? How unlimited is he? And then getting into the details of his, his personality. I mean, even to say that God has a personality, some places it's, it's taboo. It's shocking, actually. But if you dare to go there and say, okay, God's unlimited. He must have a personality. He must have relationships. And then you get into the science of the name. What kind of name does he have in those relationships? That's what comes out through Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He starts telling everybody, here's the primary names. Chant these, you'll attract his attention. He likes them. It's dear to everybody. It's dear to him. The names are dear. Because it, there's, there's, a, there's a festival going on in the spiritual world that, that, in, that is so intense with this rasa and this, these relationships. And if you can get something, some vibration that comes from that world, and you can incorporate it in your mind and in your life and surround yourself with it, that vibration will transform your whole life. That's what the science Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching about the holy name. So that's the, we are, we're being given the primary names. And this is why 
these, uh, those who know the science, they've studied it, they've sacrificed their whole life to focus on this one thing, to understand where is that place? Let's go there. It's possible. In human life, now it's possible. Yanti Deva Pata Devan, Pitan Yanti Pratirvata, Bhutani Yanti Bhutani, Yanti Mam Yanti Nopi Mam. Krishna comes out in the Gita and says, You can go wherever you like. You're free now. Free to go. And all you have to do is desire it. Point your desire in that direction and you shall have it. Ask and you will find the answer. Everything comes. The Omkar means, oh, everything's possible. This vibration is coming out of the spiritual world. Say, everything possible and more than you can imagine is, is possible. And you can get it all now. So these sages are fully concentrating on the science, giving their whole heart and energy. And then they, they write it all down for us. And they put it in these books, like the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's all in there, in the Bhagavad Gita. The science... And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes in the Kali Yuga and says, just take this name. Anyone from any position, if you just are a little respectful of the name, don't take it for granted. Just be a little respectful and give your attention to it. Then you'll get everything. You'll get the highest level of experience of, of what, what our relationship with God is, just by the name. So that's what our this movement is. The movement is all in the name. It's all in the experience that we get from the name. If we don't have the experience, we have nothing to distribute. We can build buildings, we can make institutions, we can have accountants, we can have tons of money flowing in, but it doesn't mean anything without the experience. You have to actually experience it. There have been empires that have come and gone throughout the world, but they're insignificant. They don't mean anything. The only thing that means something is the experience of the rasa that you get with God, and especially through the name in the Kali Yuga. So if you get that, you've got everything. Everything opens up from that. And that's what we're giving out for free, going here, there, and everywhere, saying, here, take it, take the name, just hear it, and you'll, you'll become perfect by this process. Om Tat Sat. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. It's really a pleasure to be here with you here at Scarborough. This is uh, a very important strategic project that you have. And that you're coming together as a group, organizing, and concentrating your energies in one place to support each other, to distribute the name and to also experience it yourself, is the highest kind of service that you're doing. Whatever trouble, you're taking to keep this center alive and to invite new people is um, is worth it and uh, it's a small price to pay any comments or questions yes go to chandra prabhu imagine that the books are written kirtan can you say a little bit more about it Well, the first people to start writing things down, I mean, humans have been writing things down for a long time, but we've become a lot more sophisticated these days due to technology. I mean, early on, there wasn't even, even paper. Paper is a fairly new invention. You just take it for granted now. You go to Office Depot and get more paper. But it, that's, that's due to technology. We take a lot for granted because of that. Previously, People used to write things on, on stone, and they'd write on shells. And then uh, when cloth started coming in, they'd use cloth. And, uh, and then back in the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, people would write things on uh, palm leaves. Palm leaves last a long time. It's actually a pretty nice medium. But you had to do it by hand. And a scribe would take a little stylus, and they'd, uh, they'd make a mark on the palm leaf, an impression, and then when you put it in the sun, then the place where you made the impression, it turns dark, and the rest of the palm leaf turns gray, uh, grayish color. Some of those palm leaves, you know, they're, they're hundreds of years old. Then the Christians are the one who started the, the printing press to make books. The first person was Gutenberg, and he invented a press because he, he wanted to get the Bible out to more people. 
because only a few people had it because it by hand and then it would be controlled by certain people they they have the Bible and say it's the word of God you got to go through me so a lot of the Protestants were saying why do you have to go through why do you have to go through him and we'll just print it ourselves and give it out to everybody so Gutenberg made the first uh, printed book called and it was called the Gutenberg Bible and then the Royal Bible Society came along and they made a, a, a higher a version of that, better technology, so they could print um, larger numbers of these books. And then it increased from there. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, they were um, visionaries for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They, they looked everywhere. They took from everywhere in the world. So they saw these uh, how the Christians were printing books. And, and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta especially picked up this uh, printing press idea. And he said, uh, let's make it part of our logo for the Gaudiya Mat, for this mission that would spread Christian consciousness all over the world. And so the printing press he considered that was used to print literature to present to the public so that they would become acquainted with the philosophy of Christian consciousness. This, he said, was um, uppercut. It was part of the spiritual world. He called it the greater Madunga. This Madunga, you can hear for a few blocks. And traditionalists, you know, they would say, you know, this is it. But he, Srila Bhakti Sanatana would say, yes, that's good, but then let's make it bigger. Brihat. And he, so the printing press, you say, that makes it louder because that then the same kirtan is being written down in these books and then you distribute them all over the world. They can, you know, books get into libraries, they get in everywhere. They actually infiltrate society, the books. And especially if you have a mass movement to distribute them everywhere, they'll actually change society. America, American Revolution was sparked by literature. There was, a, there was an essay by Thomas Paine called Common Sense and that's what incited people to rise up and have a revolution in America. And Cuba also. It was literature that got everything started. And Prabhupada emphasized over and over again how the communists spread their doctrine in India through massive distribution of literature. Everywhere, everywhere just millions and millions of pieces going out. People read it, and little Jiva gets ideas. As soon as he reads it, it goes in. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, they, they pushed this idea, print books. And, and uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he, he had his, in one of his temples, he had the altars with the deities, and then on one of the altars there's an arch, and you look in, the printing press was there, right next to the deities. And he said, because this shows that the, the Pantratrik Vidhi, this worshipping the deity in the temple, which is important to, to be able to meditate on Krishna in a, in a certain way, and this Bhagavat Marg, or... or uh, the books, the book Bhagavat and the distribution of it, they go side by side. And they're both transcendental. So in our line, uh, the, our acharyas are really into books. And uh, we all know, hopefully, that Prabhupada picked up that exact mood from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. And you know, he made his historic voyage to America loaded with books. Because you know, he picked up that faith and that idea from Srila Bhakti Sant, from a spiritual master, when he asked him, what should I do? What kind of service should I do? He said, if you ever get money, print books. In fact, he, he was telling him things like, these temples, they're troublesome. Of course, both have to be there. But he would, he would say things like that, that these temples, uh, they're, they're for the general mass of people, but our real business is broadcasting the holy name. And in the written form, it is it becomes indelible in society. The books uh, go out and they stay everywhere. And the holy name uh, is repeated many, many times over by people reading the book. It's a permanent record of, of the philosophy and the holy name is in there. And we have experience of that, that people, they, they'll take the book along and, uh, and then it affects many, many people. It can change whole uh, cities or countries, so forth. So written, the written kirtan, it's in the book. And there's many ways to distribute the Holy Name, but that's uh, still an uh, extremely viable way of doing it. And one that was particularly um, emphasized by Srila Prabhupada. Another question? Yes. Uh, I had a relative who has recently started going to his home. Um, and so I, when I was talking to her, I asked if she was now chanting 16 rounds minimum. 
And she says that uh, she can't do that, but she's been doing what she's been doing in the past, which is chanting 32 rounds of Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So I told her that's fine. Uh, oh, but I really didn't know what to tell her. But obviously it's the name of God, so Krishna. But I couldn't. I, what, what should I tell her in that instance? Well, um, dealing with each individual person and encouraging them along the Krishna consciousness is a is a custom assignment. Each person has special needs and uh, interests and, and concerns, and we've yet to meet anyone uh, that doesn't have unique circumstances. Everyone has <laughs> some unique extenuating circumstances. It's like, yeah, I'm going to take the Christian consciousness, but one thing, I got my foot caught over here, my arms over here, and, you know, everyone's entangled, <laughs> coming out of the material worlds. So each person, you have to figure, okay, move your foot two inches that way, and then uh, keep your arm there for, and then, okay, no, 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 not so fast, <laughs> you know. Uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said, bringing one person out of the material world takes gallons of blood. It's a big deal. So that's just as a preamble, but the point is uh, you have to look at the person's temperament and mentality and sort of judge them. Like a doctor does rounds. They come around to the hospital and they keep checking on the patient. How are you doing now? Okay, how, now how are you doing? You know, if it's a really acute disease, they check in more frequently and they keep a chart and see what the improvements are and things like that. So with somebody that you're, that you're you know, introducing to this idea of Krishna consciousness, you, you, um, you do it gradually and according to what they can accept. And um, so it's, it's not a bad idea uh, to say, you know, keep chanting. I mean, that's a bona fide mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. But you, you, you might want to, since we have a specific idea, we're following a specific line, and we think it's the best, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. We, we also introduce, you know, at the same time, it's like, yeah, but you might want to look at this, read this, and, and gradually, gradually, somebody who already has that amount of potency to be chanting Om Namo Bhagavate Vaya, they, they will be kind of nudge, nudge them along. It's kind of a general answer, but. Maybe for, uh, is that for one more question? Okay, it's time for one more question, so it better be good. <laughs> It was, uh, you know, we feel so fortunate to uh, have your presence here. It was a very wonderful uh, uh, lecture. <clears throat> Prabhu, uh, on the purpose of life, okay, uh, two things confront my mind. One is uh, to end this uh, cycle of repeated uh, uh, birth and death, and at the same time, uh, having the goal of eternal servant to the Supreme. So, uh, how both things uh, can be looked at without any conflict? Well, Krishna says it in the Gita. Narupa masye hatato palapyate nanto nacharir nachasam pratishta ashpatamenam suvarudam bulam asanga shastre nadritena chitva tatapatam tat parimargitavyam yasmin gata na nirvatanti puya Tame vachadyam purusham prapadye yatat prapriti prashrita purani. First he says, we're entangled in this tree of material existence, which is like a banyan tree. You can't see its form. You can't see where it begins and where it ends. That's how vast it is. We're born into the world, we're ignorant. We don't know who, who we are, where we're going, or anything like that. And then he advises, as you suggested, um, Asanga Shastrena Dridhena Chitva, Krishna says, cut down that deeply rooted tree with the weapon of detachment. Asanga Shastrena. And then right after that, he doesn't waste a breath. He says, right after that, now you have to search out that place from which uh, you've come, from where that supreme person, from whom everything emanates, lives. And there's surrender to that supreme personality of Godhead. Now that's a journey. So to some degree, we, ha we have to be fortified with this knowledge and detachment from the world. It's um, these, uh, if you don't have a little bit of detachment, then you can't move. And if you don't have a little knowledge, you don't know how to move. So in the, in the second chapter of the Bhagavatam, Sutta Goswami says, uh, 
you have to have uh, be fortified, that the sage is fortified with knowledge and detachment. They can uh, thoughtfully move forward towards developing their relationship with Krishna. Fortunately, when you practice this nam sadhana, chanting Hare Krishna, you get these concomitant uh, features of knowledge and detachment from the world. So it happens simultaneously. So if you can concentrate on this one discipline, which is chanting the name, and, and that goes along with studying about the name, hearing some mandagyan or information about your relationship with the name and about your non-relationship with the material world, that, that helps. And, and both things happen. You start to get detached, and you also start to get attracted to the idea of getting entangled in the spiritual world. There's an actual um, eternal relationship. We have an eternal kinship with the Lord, and we have an affinity for these things. It's not foreign to us. It just needs to be awakened. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadya Kabunoi Shravanani Shuddha Chitte Kara Udoi. It's naturally there that that feeling can come out. And uh, by chanting Hare Krishna, Shravanadi uh, Shuddha Chitte, uh, that hearing process, Shravanadi, and the other processes, it purifies that consciousness and then it comes, comes out naturally. And you'll become attached to the idea of surrendering to Krishna. It becomes actually a. Uh, an appealing idea. Go pray, Manande, Aribo, Vancha, Kopa, Thurvash, Chakrupa, Sinabeva, Chapatita, Nampavani, Yo, Vaishnavi, Yo, Namo, Namaha. Yeah, I know.
this is from uh, vaisheshikadasa.com. There's a wonderful website uh, you can all go to. Uh, Prabhu spent many years in searching for God. And uh, finally, when he got the book, uh, Back to God at Magazine, actually in 1973, where he saw the photograph of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, he knew he got his answers. And uh, the knowledge in the magazine inspired Prabhu so much that with the help of his mother, he immediately began visiting the ISKCON temple in San Francisco. And within few months, he had uh, joined the temple full time. And in short period of time, he received initiation from a spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, and then he, where he received his name by Sheshika Dasa. And since then, uh, he's devoted his life to the mission of his spiritual master and uh, where he's been continuously reading, studying and distributing to the masses the Vedic knowledge contained in the translations and commentaries of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. And uh, Prabhu is also uh, initiating spiritual master at ISKCON and Prabhu is currently serving as the president in ISKCON Silicon Valley. Hare Krishna. So again, on behalf of ISKCON Skapra, I would like to humbly welcome Prabhu and Mataji. And uh, Prabhu has been uh, also um, uh, taking on many, many projects. He's initiated several projects. And one such uh, project is National Sankirtan Team, NST, is a coalition of Sankirtan leaders in America and Canada who meet regularly through conference calls as well as through Yahoo group to share best practices for the improvement and expansion of Sankirtan movement. Another project is uh, Team NorCal, where uh, devotees in Northern California uh, meet to expand the Sankirtan movement uh, throughout Northern California. And uh, there is another project, distributebooks.com, where the website, through the website, many devotees all over the world can learn and share best practices for improving and expanding book distribution. And also, another project is Sankirtan Strategies Foundation, which is a think tank bringing together key Sankirtan strategies from around the world to discuss, implement, and promote innovative methods for distributing books. And many, many other projects as well, uh, like uh, Smart Box, Smart Table, Full Set Distribution, Sastradhan, Monthly Sankirtan Festival, which all of us are uh, very aware of, thanks to Radha Mohan Prabhu and other uh, devotees here who spearheaded this project in Toronto very well. Weekend Warriors and Door-to-Door uh, -door Book Distribution. And this is uh, exciting. There is also another project called uh, Mortal Gita, where Bhagavad Gita has been uh, distributed to many of the hotels and models like Best Western, Quality Inn, Howard Johnson, Comfort Inn, Holiday Inn, the list goes on. So again, these are wonderful <laughs> projects that are and for those of you who are here, and uh, we, it's good news is we can have more of uh, Prabhu's Nectarian Association for the next uh, two days. Because tomorrow, Saturday, May 18th, there is Harinam Sankirtan in downtown Toronto from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. And there is uh, Bhajan in the evening from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. at ISKCON Toronto. And also Prabhu will be giving the class on Sunday during the Sunday feast at ISKCON Toronto on May 19th. Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama
राम राम हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Krishna 